In this video, we will add and configure Swagger for our Habit Tracker API so the consumers would have an easier time to integrate with it. The topics that we will cover will basically be, first of all, the general configuration of Swagger and how to do that. Then we will take a look at summaries and descriptions of API methods, as well as customize the response codes that our API operations return after a successful completion or if some failure happened, like for example, problem, validation, details, error, or some uh, stuff like that. We will take a look at how we can add descriptions for route parameters if they have some weird name over here. Take a look at how we can group the operations by tags, as well as mark some operations deprecated or hide them all together. And the cherry on top will be overriding the built-in example payloads that will be generated when we will configure Swagger. My name is Vasily Olenik and this is the Minimal API course series where we are building a REST API for a habit tracker app, mobile app, using the industry's best practices. Okay, so how are we gonna achieve that? First of all, we will need to add this swashbuckle ASP.NET Core Nougat package. Then we need to search for ASP.NET Core dot open API Nougat package, which is this one. We are going to install this too, then go over to our program.cs. We'll first add builder.services at endpoint API Explorer, which I missed when I was first configuring it. So I was searching for the why Swagger generation wasn't working on my end. So the next one is builder services at Swagger gen. In here, we can send in a configuration, which we will specify a little bit later, but we'll return to it. Uh, next, we need to configure our middleware. So right below where we build our application, we specify that app use Swagger and then write below. I prefer to have it is app.useSwaggerUI. Over here, we can as well have configuration, which I'm going to copy from my code base over here. So uh, here you see that it's a route prefix, which is a string empty. This basically means that we are providing our Swagger UI at this endpoint. So it's HTTPS, localhost, uh, then we have the port number and slash. Basically, this is the URL that we are going to use to provide our Swagger UI, which is basically the startup URL. In our case, I've set up like four lines of code. So I'm going to run this solution and then go over to the browser. What we have here is a basic bare configuration, which uh, yeah, it's way better than the white slate that we've previously had. And it makes life easier for the ones that want to consume our API, but it's still not there. Why I say that is because for the delete method, for example, we are returning a 200, but what if we don't find the habit with this UI, uh, with this ID, for example, for the get method as well. Uh, yeah, we sh could return a 404. I mean, we should return a 404 if we don't find it, but over here, it's not really specified that it can return a 404. For example, the post API operation returns a 200 over here, says that it returns a 200, but in reality, it should return a 201 created. Yeah, and there are more things, small things like that that need adjustment. For us to get those adjustments, I'm going to go and stop the solution. From the previous video, I've moved all the data endpoints to the route group itself over here. So first of all, I'm going to add the with open API. Next, I'm going to the post method where we create a habit. So over here, I'm going to say that it accepts a habit DTO of type application slash JSON and it produces a habit DTO with a status code of 201. What we can do over here as well is basically remove this and have the curly braces. Now have it here. 
And for the habit detail, I think I have a validator over here. So which is basically a habit detail validator that will check if the name is provided. And for example, I want to validate and say to the end user that this endpoint operation might return a validation failure. For that, I will just inject the iValidator of habit detail into the endpoint. And over here, just go with the basic approach var validation result equals await validator validate async and just pass in the model. Now, if validation result is valid, if it's not valid, I'm going to paste in here a small piece of code that will return a result validation problem. And over here, we can specify that it can produce a validation problem. And we go back over here, refresh the page, take a look at the post API endpoint. So we can see that the definition has changed. Over here, we have a 201 created and a 400 bad request in case we have validation problems. That's not all. We can as well specify in addition, if we don't want to use the validation problems, there is an overload, I think, that produces problem. And in here, we specify the status code, for example, 400 and the content type, which is basically in most of the cases, in your cases will be application.json. So if we don't want this one, we can just comment it out and say that it produces a problem. I'm going to remove it all back and leave it like this. For some operations, for example, I want to add some IDs. So for certain API, we, API operation, we can specify with name and in here just pass in a name for our operation, which is basically in our case, create habit. And then we can use this ID in other places as well. Uh, let me just run it once again and show one more thing that I want to fix is basically over here, as you can see, it's habit tracker API, which I don't really like because, well, basically I'm used to having the controller names over here and how we can group all this API v1 habits into one and specify basically the name of the group in here. Uh, for that, I'm going to return to the habit group itself. And over here, I will add tags. And in here, I'm going to specify habits. If I run this right now, and we go back to our Swagger doc, refresh, as you can see, it's already grouped under habits. So we can adjust this name over here as well. Now, let's say we go to the map delete over here. And we basically over here want to say that and add a description to this parameter over here that this ID is basically the ID of the habit that we want to delete. I know it's self-explanatory from the parameter name, but let's assume that we have some weird naming or some weird path that we need support. For that, we can use the web with open API extension method. And in here, we can specify this one. So it's a generated operation. And we take a look at the parameters and say that the parameter uh, description is the ID associated with the created habit. Let me run this solution right now once again and go back to the Swagger definition. So refresh the page. Over here, as you can see, the ID, we have a description that this is the ID with associate, associated with the created habit. So I'm going to stop it. Okay, so for the streak operation, let's say I want to add a description since, well, streak for a person that doesn't know the API or doesn't know how the application is working, they don't really know what's this streak all about. So for that, I'm going to use with open API over here. I'm going to butcher the word operation. So in here, operation dot description. Oops, sorry, not deprecated. It's description, which basically says that 
return the longest streak of the uh, habit with the specified ID. So if I will have it and return operation. Now, if I run this, we'll have this description at the level of the API method. So let me return over here, refresh the page. So we have the streak and we have the return the longest streak of the habit with its specified ID. Great, so that's one more way to specify some weird API operations that we have. Since I've had the typo in the past, we can as well say that the operation has been deprecated and just specify that it's true. If I run it right now and go back to the habit API, just refresh it and you can see that it's marked as it's deprecated which is really nice. I've never used it in practice, but yeah, it's good to know that it's there. So the next one is really situational, but well, you have the possibility. So there is an exclude from description method, which will basically just make your, well, self-explanatory, exclude your API operation from the Swagger documentation if you need to do that. Oh uh, yeah, as I said, it's really situational and I've rarely used it in the past. Now for the last part where we customize this payload that we have over here, we have two ways. I would say we have the basic one, which is with open API. And then in here we specify the request body. So if I run it right now, and we go back to the documentation, refresh the page itself, take a look at the post method. And as you can see, we have an ID of one and new name as passed in as the name itself instead of the string. So yeah, this is neat, but to be honest, I don't really like all this stuff in here. Previously, we've had a much cleaner way to do all this stuff. So I'm going to remove this over here, go to manage Nougat packages, and we will need to add this one's Swashbuckle ASP.NET Core filters. Nougat package, I'm going to install it. And once that it's installed, I'll go into infrastructure, add in here, example, payload provider. And in here I'll have it I example provider of habit BQ. It would be better if I would have named this one like habit payload provider, but whatever. Right now it's a box, so I'll return a new habit DTO over here and have ID equals one. Name sorry, name equals new name from provider so it doesn't collide and we can see. Now, once we have the example payload provider over here, we are going to return to add swagger generation method. So in here, I'm going to specify that I want to, exam to use example filters and as well, just customize a little bit the swagger documentation. So we have a nice title, habit tracker API, versioning enable, etc. Uh, besides this, we will need one more line of code that I'm going to copy really fast and paste it over here, which is be basically builder services at Swagger example from assembly. And I specify the program.cs. So I'm going to run it right now and return to the Swagger documentation, refresh it. And as you can see, it's already applied. And I'll be honest, I much more preferred this way. I know it's installing one more NuGet package, but it's way cleaner looking than previously. Well, it's basic development, so you have double-edged swords everywhere and you need to pick up your fights. Okay, so that was mostly it for today's video. We've taken a look at a bunch of ways you can configure your OpenAPI specification to meet different needs. And as a closing thought, I would say that you should add Swagger to all your APIs that you are developing. 
even if they, this Swagger page will not be really available in production, for example, you would have an API manager on top of your more than one API. So let's say in development phase, it will make life way easier for you to debug your issues for testers, let's say to test right against your API. Well, they would probably have some Postman collections or some automated test suites, but yeah, for starters, it will make their life way easier since they have this open API specification from the get go. Thank you for watching and sticking up to this point. In the minimal API core series so far, we've covered a lot of the basics that we'll need to have to know in order to build our habit tracker API. So from the next video, we will really start on building that API. Until then, I'll leave a couple of videos over here to some other topics uh, that I cover on my channel that you can watch in the meantime, topics such as caching, logging, uh, health checks, etc. So yeah, thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you will know when the next video appears. With that said, see you next time. Bye.